What's going on, everyone? Hope you all had a great weekend. Waking up today, I saw Bitcoin was over forty-six thousand um, dollars. That's a pretty big rebound from I think like was it like thirty thousand dollars a couple of weeks ago. And as a result, a lot of times when Bitcoin um, does these drastic gap ups, a lot of these uh, Bitcoin stocks follow suit as well. So some of my favorite stocks to trade whenever Bitcoin makes these kind of moves are Mara and Riot. And recently there's, a, there's been a lot of smaller ones such as BTBT. So these were the stocks on my main watch today. So I traded them both long and short and uh, overall I'm green on the day, but there was one trade that I'm not very happy about and I totally messed up on. So without further ado, let's dive straight into this. So the first stock I started watching and kind of seeing whether it's going to continue to the upside was BTBT. This is a stock that's been uh, rallying off the, the daily chart from the bottoms pretty much from $7 and $8. And uh, it's been drastically going up higher for I think the consecutively you know, six, five or six days. And uh, this is a pretty, pretty big um, squeeze move. However, it, it is getting the, to the po point where it's getting extended. If you look at um, on Friday, where the top was around 1940s, um, that's also the area on the daily with a lot of major resistance. So for the stock to break out higher today, it needs to hold the breakout move from, first of all, from Friday. And really, technically speaking, it needs to hold about $20. So because there's a lot of resistance around 20s as well. So that's the reason that I was open to playing both sides and especially if Bitcoin pulls back, which it started doing after the open. Um, Bitcoin pulled back a little bit about um, 30 minutes after the stock market opened. Um, so that's where I was kind of scaling in short around that time. So if you look at the intraday chart on BTBT, yes, it had a nice rally off the open from $19 through uh, Friday's high um, 1940s and went all the way to 20s. So around this $20 mark is where I was seeing some selling pressure um, in the price action. And uh, yes, the first entry here, I got uh, entered around 20. I got stopped out um, pretty much right to right around 20, 20s, um, thinking that, okay, this thing is going to continue squeezing up higher. Um, and I tried it again here, smaller size, 2020s. Um, and then I see it squeeze through the high of the day, went all the way to 2070s. But if you were watching the stock at that time, it went to new highs and immediately slam right back down under um, the 2020s and even 2010s area. So that to me, it tells me that, okay, that was basically just a short squeeze. A lot of big shorts got blown out uh, and you need, after the shorts get squeezed, you need actual buying, actual new buyers coming in to buy the stock to see more upside. And once that happened, um, that's why I covered some, I wanna scale back in slowly if it is really gonna hold under $20 area. Um, so I did scale, um, I did cover some, cover some, and I let it tank from $20 all the way to 1920. So that's a big range. But this bounce, bounce all the way to as close as 20 as I could see it. Um, also lines up with, with um, VWAP. Um, so I got in, I got my ad around 1986s, um, and that was a very decent entry. And this thing just tanked after the, the, the bounce, the short term bounce, all the way to um, $19. So that's a pretty decent, uh, a, a little bit over a dollar a share move. Um, pretty decent. Um, I got out most of it here. I got out the remaining here because Bitcoin at the time had a had a very pretty big rally, a rebound. You can see after I got out, this thing bounced from 1890s all the way back to 2020. So if I didn't get out of my shorts, I would have gotten stopped and uh, stopped out, which is fine. But um, this is just a, a very volatile stock. But you can see after that $20 retest, this thing just cracked right under and just fades. The biggest trade was here. I did try it again here, thinking that we might um, slowly fade down to a previous day close, which I mean, it did, but just took a little bit too long and I wasn't comfortable down here. Um, so I showed it here 1846. I covered pretty much at this exact same spot. Um, I. You know, in hindsight, I wish I was more patient about this, um, but uh, it just it just it just looked like it could have consolidated to go back higher. And um, so that's my short thesis. I basically got out all of it 
around nineteen dollars, and now it's fading down to seventeen. It's actually going red on the day. So this thing has a lot more downside, probably to um, somewhere around fifteen fifties and sixteen dollars at the end of the day today, potentially. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'm all out of the trade. Overall, I did really well on this on the short side. BTBT was the Bitcoin stock I did pretty well on on the short side, and the one I kind of did terribly on is M A R A Mara. So this one I was actually more bullish on this. I just didn't execute this well, even though all of these I started adding in on smaller sizes. So that we talked about many times. If your full size is one thousand shares, I'll start adding in with like two hundred, two fifty, slowly like that. So even though they were all like losses on small size, it definitely added up. Now, I'm not happy about this. It chopped my daily profit more than fifty percent. So I'm not. It's, I think it's more around like sixty, seventy percent, which is not good. Um, but I know myself that um, I, this ticker, I just didn't have a good execution on this. So I got long here starter, and I see it uh, break out to high all day, which is nice. Uh, but rejected, and I got stopped out here. Uh, around thirty six sixties. So it, these are start, starter sizes. So each one stop out. It's not a significant amount. And I tried it again here. Starter again. Added on the pole back didn't work. And this is where I should have just stopped out altogether, like I did here. But instead, I added a little bit more and added a little bit more. And I turned it around to look at my BTBT short. And also at the time, I was also on lonely mRNA. And I turned around. I looked at it, and this thing's at the very bottom. Bottom. Don't get too comfortable, even if you are only in with a small starter size. When I see that, I just got out most of it, and I got out more around thirty six dollars. I'm not happy about this. This is a pretty big drop.、Um, after all these like small ads, I had an average about thirty six seventies, and seeing it drop a dollar under, it's still even with small size, it's still not fun, right?、Um, so this thing, you know, I got out most of it thirty five sixties, and the rest of it around thirty sixes. So this is my loser on the day on the long side. You know, the lesson from this is definitely like keep your stops tight. Even if you are in just small size, you don't want to let it drag down your P and L curve for a lot,、uh, you know, too much. So for me, giving back, I think like seventy percent of the profit on the day because of this one trade, this is not good. Don't do this. Okay, learn from this mistake. I'm just happy it didn't make me go red on the day, but it could have, right? If if, if I left this thing alone, it could have tanked a lot further. So that was the loser on the day. The other trade that was also a very decent winner, even though I only had small size, was M R N A. I've been watching the stock ever since like the open when it broke through and went re-、uh, green on the day, and especially when it broke through all of these daily resistance around four thirties, and then the high, the previous all time high was four. Forty fours up around、uh, up here this area. So、uh, I've been watching the stock for a long, and this is probably like my fifth time or something talking about this stocks breaking through all time highs. Just don't short it. You know, look for pullbacks to long or just avoid trading it altogether if you're not a good long trader. Because stocks like these are the stock. Look at that breakout. Did did you guys see that breakout? Um, that squeeze stocks like these are what kills short sellers. When it just goes straight up and doesn't really pull back, it's frustrating for the people who are looking to long the pullback, like I was. But at the same time, I would much rather miss this long trade altogether than to be that person trying to short and find tops every single rip,、uh, and they get short squeeze on the upside. Like right now, if you were trying to short this thing around four sixties. Well, you just blew through the four sixties resistance, right? We're literally trading near all time highs. You have to think about this psychologically speaking. There's not a lot of incentives for the people who are long the stock to sell、um, a stock that's so strong. For some psychological reason, when people who are long the stock, they see the stock so strong, they never want to sell. They only think about selling when the stocks are red or when it's going down for multiple days. Just, just the psychology of the market. 
So that means you don't want to be shorting the stock when there's nobody selling the stock. In fact, everyone's probably thinking of buying the stock because it looks strong. Um, it's a vaccine stock. You know, people are in need of more vaccines. And most importantly, it's just breaking through all-time highs. So you only want to short when there's reasons for the buyers to sell the stock. But anyways, um, enough of a tangent, sorry. Um, I got long, small size, because this is a really, really small pullback. 441s, and I added on the breakout mode 446, sold some into it, and tried to hold the majority um, as best as I could. Majority of my small starter size. Um, I got out over 455, and uh, now it's up another $10 a share. So fun, fun, fun. At this rate, Moderna is going to reach $500 maybe today or tomorrow. I think it'll be very interesting. We'll see. This thing's basically been going straight up for the last month since the beginning of July from $200. Now it's more than doubled um, after one month. So this is a pretty, pretty impressive move for Moderna. All right, it's time for our Q and A's. After the last video I did where I trade, you guys saw me trade some put options on AMD. They were lottos. Um, we, I got a lot of questions in the comments section asking why I don't trade options anymore. And it's really simple because I am not good at trading it. I think everyone should focus on what they're good at. Uh, and for me, I'm only good at those specific um, situations like I talked about in the last video. And another reason is because in my first one or two years in trading, um, I dabbled with options and that's where a lot of my big losses came from. And even after I became profitable, whenever I start thinking about, oh, let me try options again because People always say you can turn $100 into you know, $10,000. So I would try it. And every time I, even after I became profitable trading just stocks, I go back to trading options. I would lose a lot of money. So this is just a situation where I know what I'm bad at and I am going to avoid trading it unless I absolutely see something that's worthwhile risk reward wise. So if I'm not saying don't trade options, I think if it works well for you, you should trade it. But I think the, the lesson here is to focus on what you're good at. So for me, I just find it so much easier to trade stocks. I can make profits consistently. I don't have to worry about the Greeks, about the expiry or about the premiums. So it makes a lot more sense for me personally. So you should find out what works for you, whether it's stocks or options. It's worthwhile to try both small size in the beginning and find a focus. Trading is very versatile. You can trade so many different asset classes. You can go long, you can go short. Um, there's different ways to hedge your trading. There is definitely a lot more than one way to make money in the market. What matters more is that you experiment and you find out what works for you. Hopefully that answers your questions. If you have any more for me, you can leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the bad jokes. If you want to see more day trading content, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more. If you'd like to trade with me daily and get my free weekend watch list and trading journal, make sure to check out the links below for more resources. Stay green, stay positive, and I'll see you guys next time.